Howdy, folks. It's me, Brandon, Wyoming Eyes Hole. So, I haven't made a fishing video in a long time. As you can see, I am uh, walking through grass right now. It's probably not very likely to happen today. But, I got a new mission. So, the weather's been crappy here. I live in Wyoming, obviously. It's been raining all day, and it may rain again. But, it doesn't matter. I got some work to do. So, the mission. This will be a multi-video series. But, there's the boat. The boat has water in it. I guess I could fish there. Anyway, the mission today and for several weeks is I'm going to turn that, this red six foot by 10 foot cargo trailer. This is going to be the Wyoming Ice Hole Remote Fishing Excursion Vehicle. That's not true. I'm gonna turn it into a camper. Um, camper's Leak, the ones you buy. Um, there's the horses. Hi, horses. Camper's Leak. These don't leak as much. Campers cost, you know, $10,000 or so for one big enough for two people to be comfortable to live in. This did not. I'm gonna make it my way. I'm gonna make it look like a log cabin inside. Eventually I'll do the exterior, but, uh, you gotta start somewhere, right? So we start by tearing it down. So I'll show you what I'm talking about once I get the doors open, lay out my tools. Again, this will be several different videos. Um, a lot of people really like these, these type of videos. I have watched tons of them myself. Um, so yeah, this will be a complete build. I'll show you what the inside of this thing looks like in a minute. And uh, I hope you're watching. I know it's not a fishing video, but hey, it's okay. Um, this is important too. This will um, get me out to places I can stay on site longer, particularly during the ice season. Um, I may put a wood stove inside this thing. Um, so it's super comfortable in the winter. A lot of work to do. I'll show you, um, kind of the rough schematic I've got and kind of what the plan is. Anyway, enjoy. Here we go. Inside. <clears throat> Again, this uh, this is a small trailer, right? Six by ten. Now, typically, ninety-nine percent of the time that this thing will be used, it'll just be my wife and I in here camping. Um, we currently camp in a tent situation, which is not the best idea in Wyoming. Um, tents tend to blow into lakes that you're nearby if you don't um, stake them down with. Uh, the equivalent of steel cables and winches because our wind is usually about 350 miles an hour uh, You you're constantly battling the elements um, be it snow wind um, rain, whatever um, It also gets really hot here sometimes and there's no good way to cool down um, Cooking outside in a tent situation again, you're weather dependent. So what I want is just a simple um, inexpensive, self-contained uh, uh, 
sleeping situation, right? So as time goes on, I'll explain more about what this whole build is gonna look like, but basically there'll be a bed um, built up on a frame structure. All of this area where my camera is, is currently sitting, facing the back doors, this will be storage area wide enough to hold um, totes. Over here on this side, um, underneath the structure, will be a solar controller, uh, batteries that are on a pull-out tray, um, all that sort of thing. It's going to be self-powered, self-contained. Um, I'll probably do a um, solar generator um, or, you know, to start with, maybe marine batteries. Um, again, I'm on a budget, so I'm going to try to do this cheap. The uh, total budget I have for the project, I'm going to try to do this for $1,000 initially, $1,000 or less. Now, granted, that's not going to paint the outside. Um, it's not going to do stuff like that. But I think $1,000 will get us our interior, um, the obviously the bed, the structure, um, and most of the power. Although I may not have enough left to get um, solar panels on that $1,000 budget. doesn't matter. It's what we're aiming for. It's just a goal. Um, yeah, we're going to see what we can do. So the first thing I have to do, I'm going to grab the camera here. Pardon the shakiness. First thing that has to be done is all this wood in the interior and our iced coffee sign. All of that needs to come out so that I can see the, the skin of this thing. Um, we're going to put windows in here, and so obviously I can't have all this wood. Now I am going to try to be careful as I do this because this wood, it is pretty good high quality paneling, I guess is what it is. Um, it's in good shape. It's There's parts that have got moisture. I found a couple of leaks here. So um, I got a few problems with this thing I don't yet know how to solve. Um, one of those being the floor, which we'll talk about it a little bit more, but what I want to do is I don't want to put wood or anything like that down on top of this. And the reason is, as you can see, here I am standing up straight, and that's how much headroom I have. With a hat off, you know, I can move. Um, but I got to put something up here. Right now we're thinking some corrugated steel um, for looks, you know, like a you know, cheap metal siding for a barn or something up here and so that stuff is ribbed so if I add very much height to this floor um, I'm gonna have a situation where I gotta walk around in here like this and I don't want that I want to be able to stand up straight my lighting will go more towards the sides and uh, theoretically and this I'll replace this with one of those super fancy high-powered 12 volt fans um, yeah, all this lighting that's in here, it's all going to go. Um, yeah, so that's phase one, and that's what uh, this first video is going to be. I'm going to tear this out um, without tearing it, right? Oh, I didn't finish um, this paneling because it's so good and so strong and in good shape. I think I'm going to use it for the inside of the cabinetry that I build. So bed, uh, full-size bed back here, kind of up on a platform. Here where the camera is facing, this is the driver's side of the trailer. Um, this will be a 18 inch wide countertop with some cabinets underneath. There'll be a little edge of counter that comes out right here. There'll be a sink basin in that. And, uh, Hey, I have a leak. See that water? Look at that. Look at that. See, that's the other thing. I've got to come in here. I've got about 20 tubes of silicone, um, everywhere that could potentially possibly even remotely be a seam is going to get siliconed on the inside and then on the outside I'll do the RV type rubber. Anyway, that's the general plan. You don't want to hear about it. You want to see it, right? So that's next. I'm going to start taking all this wood material out. I'm going to try to save it for the interior of the cabinets um, so that I don't have to waste expensive cedar siding material, um, which will be the inside of our walls. Um, I'll just do the inside of the cabinets with those and yeah, so Let's get it off of here and uh, see what lives underneath. See you in a second. I hate flat head screws. Dad, why did you put these in here?
just kidding, Dad. You probably didn't. You wouldn't use a flathead screw. I know better than that. I don't know. It's in there like something Dad would put in.
gangster. Gangster. stuff but yeah this wiring looks good I got to replace a few of the lights outside but all in all it's not bad this little area up here so honestly I'm not sure why this thing is designed this way I mean not that you're gonna be able to see it but there's like a there's a solid steel wall here right but then this outside thing is like a weird fiberglass thing. I don't know why you would do this. If there's any trailer people out there that gets this voodoo wizardry and the logic behind it, I would love to hear it. I mean, at first thought, I'm thinking aerodynamics maybe because it's certainly not functional, right? It doesn't do anything for the inside, I can't use this. And it's gonna be a pain in the butt to block off. And because this is fiberglass and it's another seam, if I'm gonna have a leak in here, where is it gonna come from? This thing, right? I don't know. I don't know why somebody would do this. But whatever, it's here. So I don't know exactly how I'm gonna close this off. Um, Cross that bridge when we get there. But one thing, see that screw right there? That screw is right over where that big drop of water is. And it's a screw through fiberglass. And it is the only one. So I have to imagine that they missed it. They missed whatever they were aiming for. And that right there, it's rusty. That's what's leaking. So I'm actually, I'll end up pulling that screw out and getting some fiberglass repair and fixing that. Yeah, so I can see some light right there. Ow. This right here is a hot mess. I don't know exactly what's going on, but it's fine. We'll just put a lot more silicone on there, right? When in doubt, silicone. That's what I say. You should write that down. Anyway, so yeah, so um, as you can see, there's some light rust on this part of the frame here, which again, just furthers my theory that this fiberglass contraption is going to be nothing but problem. And I don't know how to do anything different with it. So I'm just gonna, just gonna have to goop it, goop it good. Anyway, I'm going to take these lights down today. I'm probably going to take this screen thing off because as you can see, it's just kind of hanging there. I'm not ready to replace this yet, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, so next item on the agenda. A little silicone that too. Next item on the agenda is to bring the shop vac in here. And I don't know if that's mice or bugs or what, but something's tried to set up a home in these little spaces. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll silicone. 
And uh, then the next step is start thinking about wiring. I went ahead and got wire. I was thinking that I would go ahead and run wire to where all of my lights and my um, electrical control box, all that stuff will be. I don't know if I'm going to do that today though because I really need to think that map out. And it would probably be helpful if I went ahead and got the at least the fuse box and the bus and connected all that and then run wires from it instead of trying to run wires to it. Um, yeah, but I'll need wire run for a new fan. I mean, there's not a fan, a fan. Not exactly sure where lights are going to go yet, um, but they'll be throughout. I'm thinking just four LED strips um, and I'll wire it to where one switch does right side, one switch does left side, or I may wire it front and back. I don't know. Like I say, there will be a little cabinet here. The countertop will go here and then the little sink. I'll put a switch um, down here on the side of this uh, on the side of this cabinet because I mean it seems like well why would it might be dark and why would you want to come in and flip a light? Well, the reason is because that's going to be a hollow opening inside the cabinet and it'll be a heck of a lot easier to put the um, switches and stuff inside there because this is all going to be cedar plank siding inside quarter inch cedar plank so I don't want to have to try to fit electrical wiring in this tiny little space because I want to fill that with insulation this is Wyoming so um, I have to think about that so there will be a switch in here and you know you got to make a step in and then bam flip the switch and then obviously the bed will be back here. So there'll be a switch somewhere in this vicinity, a set of switches, and it'll control probably left side, right side, and then switches for the fan. And uh, that's all because there will be, I'll run a uh, regular household outlet that'll come out under the bed. I'll put a shore power um, pigtail connector out the side of the trailer right there so that I can charge my solar system um, from from that and also I'll have one outlet in there that is um, household for that you know for I don't know air conditioner whatever I mean if I'm gonna run shore power to it I may as well put an outlet so that I can access it right and then again that'll hook up that'll charge the 12 volt system um, through the controller and I think that's it. I don't think I need any other electrical run in here. I'm not going to have water. Um, I'll bring water with me, but it's not going to have a tank or anything else. It's just one more thing to freeze and break in the winter. Um, we'll bring our own water. Um, we'll catch our gray water. Uh, we won't be producing black water. We'll use uh, porta potty or um, the woods, like like God intended. Um, you know, we're we like to camp. We don't we don't glamp. We're not looking for a hotel room in the woods although this would be pretty close to that um we're good with being outside pooping outside i have no problem with that there's not a lot of body things in wyoming so it's good anyway i'm gonna quit chit chatting take these uh these things off of there so i don't have to keep ducking them um and then see if i can get power out here and shop back this bad boy <laughs>